Hello everybody, this is my lecture for week 13, uh, session 1. Let's continue the discussion about piping um, system. We already discussed single pipes, and then uh, last lecture we discussed the multiple pipes. You learn about series and parallel pipes, and today uh, I will go over uh, one example for parallel pipes, and then uh, we'll discuss loops, and then we can start pipe networks, uh, you know, next lecture. So if you remember for the single pipes, we can define, you know, different types of problems, and then we discuss uh, three typical problems uh, you know, for single pipes. Uh, keep in your mind that you can use this, you know, uh, three typical pipes, you know, for uh, problems for parallel and, you know, um, uh, series pipes as well. So uh, for the type one, it's straightforward. Uh, normally, you need to find the pressure drop, head loss. In some cases, you may need to find, you know, the uh, thermophysical properties and you know these parameters. For the second type, normally the uh, you know pressure drop is given. However, you need to find the uh, flow rate and average velocity. So both flow rates and average velocities, you know, are unknown. And then you have the pipe diameter. So for the third one, the pipe diameter is unknown. And then also one of the flow rates and average velocities are, you know, uh, unknown as well. Uh, so for the type two and type three, you need to use the iteration method, or you can use, you know, those actually, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, graphs, you know, um, from chapter, I think, um, four to just find, you know, the unknown properties. So uh, for the parts in series, you learn that the uh, uh, actually um, uh, volumetric flow rate can be constant. Actually, the mass flow rate is constant. If we assume that the uh, a flow rate is incompressible, then the volumetric flow rate will be constant. So we can write, uh, you know, volumetric flow rate is constant for incompressible flow rates. And then keep in your mind that the total head loss is the sigma head loss, you know, in all pipes. So for this case, for example, the total head loss is HL1 plus HL2 plus HL3. For parallel pipes, the uh, mass flow rate is the combination of, you know, all uh, mass flow rates, or a uh, mass flow rate is sigma mi for parallel pipes. If we assume that we have incompressible fluids for parallel pipes, we can write the volumetric flow rate is sigma, uh, you know, uh, V dot i. And then you actually we prove that you know for parallel pipes the pressure drop is the same or constant, and uh, meaning that you know the head loss is you know constant for uh, parallel pipes. Um, so let's solve you know this example. Let's go over this example. So assume that you have a line of six nominal scheduled 40 galvanized pipe to uh, convey water. And for uh, uh, and then you know that the length of this pipeline is uh, thousand feet, and then you have the pressure drop between you know the inlet and exit of this you know pipe. So for some reason you just uh, uh, you want to increase the volumetric flow rate you know through this pipeline. So you decide you decided to add a new pipe, a parallel pipe to this one, a four nominal a schedule forty to just increase the uh, volumetric flow rate and then the total volumetric flow rate uh, you know for these two pipes is 1.25 cubic feet per second um, so uh, you ask to calculate the uh, actually flow rate and also velocity for each uh, pipe so based on the available information this is you know the uh, you know parallel pipe you know problems so uh, uh, what we need to do, guys, if you just look at the, you know, information, you can see that, you know, this is the type 2 problem. Why? Because the diameters are known, you know, we have, you know, the nominal, you know, diameter, so we can simplify, you know, the uh, actually exact diameter. So, uh, diameters are known. And then uh, we have lengths, we have the pressure drop. However, the flow rates, you have actually the combination, the total flow rate, but the flow rate, a volumetric flow rate in each pipe, you know, is on and on. also, you know, the velocity. So this is the type two. So uh, to solve, you know, problems, actually, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, pipe systems. What we need to do first, we need to find, you know, some parameters. We need to collect some parameters. Uh, the first actual problem is the thermophysical properties. You need to find density and, you know, viscosity. Uh, you need those parameters to calculate Reynolds number. Uh, moreover, you need to find, you know, the diameters, correct, from the tables. And then eventually you need to find the uh, epsilon uh, to find, you know, the uh, roughness. A relative roughness. So let's start from the first one, you know, the thermophysical properties of fluid. So the fluid is water. If you use table B1, you can find the viscosity and uh, density. So the second one, you need to find, you know, the diameter. So if, again, you use table, uh, if you use table D1 for uh, four nominal schedule 4D, so this is the four nominal schedule 4D, you can find the inside diameter and also the flow area in you know feet and cubic feet and also you can find for the six feet so from this table uh, you can find you know the diameters and then the last one is you know the roughness you need to use table three one to find roughness for gall lines you know epsilon and so here you have a range you know for the gall lines you know for the epsilon so you can assume an average value for the roughness for example you know five uh, times ten to negative four feet so this is all uh, actually you know um, information that you need to collect to solve the problem now you actually saw that this is the second actually uh, type of problems so let's write the Bernoulli equation for uh, between point A and B. If we write the Bernoulli equation between point A and B, I mean, we just call, uh, select, you know, um, both these two types as, you know, um, uh, control volume. And then the uh, V, I wrote just, you know, the Bernoulli equation between point A and B. So for this case, the, the uh, pressure drop is given, correct? We have the pressure drop. And so we can cancel z you know the uh, height you can assume you know uh, this is the visual and then uh, for the velocities guys so uh, for the velocities we, if we assume that the uh, you know uh, pipe diameter in the inlet and exit are the same here and here then we can assume that the velocity at point A and B are the same because the total volumetric flow rate is constant. So areas are constant, um, you know, then you can cancel the velocities. Again, I just wrote the Bernoulli equation for point A and B. And then for point A and B, this is the, you know, combination point. I mean, you know, um, uh, the total volumetric flow rate. So if I assume that, you know, the average is constant, then I can cancel, you know, velocity and then there is no uh you know uh, pump there is no uh actually you know turbine so we can cancel these things and then we can write the delta p uh, over rho g equals to the hl and then you saw that for the parallel pipes the head loss is actually you know uh you know um equal you know for both these two pipes so we can write uh, this delta p over rho g equals the hl for pipe one and the head loss for pipe two so now we can set two different equations correct we can set one equation for pipe one based on the head loss in pipe one and then one equation based on the head loss you know for pipe two so if you set this equation and you assume that the minor losses are negligible so uh in these two equations, keep in your mind that the delta P is known, you have the density G is known, length is the same, we have the length, uh, diameters are known, you found it, and then V1, F1, and V2 and F2 are unknown. So if you substitute, you know, the available information um, um, into this equation, you can find two equations between friction factors and velocities. Keep in your mind that the delta P is in, you know, PSI, you need to you just convert it to pound per uh, feet square. So from here, we can find two equations between velocities and uh, friction factor. Moreover, if you write the um, actually mass flow rate or volumetric flow rate you know, equation, you can find two other actually equations between uh, volumetric flow rate and velocities, V1 and V2. For, for example, for uh, pipe one, you can write the volumetric flow rate uh, Q1 or V.1 equals to um, A1 times V1, correct? And then D1 
the um, A1 is known, you found it from the table, um, if, you know, in the previous, you know, slides. So if you substitute for the A1 here, you can find a relationship between volumetric flow rate in pipe 1 and V1. Also, you can find a relationship between volumetric flow rate in pipe 2 and velocity in pipe 2. Now you have four equations and uh, you can actually... Uh, uh, use iteration method to solve the problem. How, what you need to do, you need to assume uh, initial value for F1 and F2, then you can find velocities V1 and V2 from this, you know, two equations that you found from the Bernoulli equation. By having the V1 and V2, you found two correlation for volumetric flow rates. You can find the volumetric flow rates if you have the velocities. Now you have the velocities. So uh, you can check if, sorry, now you have the volumetric flow rate. You can just check if the total volumetric flow rate equals to the 1.25. If so, you can check, you know, the delta P. Otherwise, you need to just repeat, you know, the process with new F. How you can find the new F by having the velocity. You can find the Reynolds number. You have the epsilon over D. You can find the new F. Keep in your mind that this is the first method to solve this problem. So, uh, to actually, uh, uh, you know, for the uh, initial guess for friction factors. Um, so we have the relative roughness for both these two actually, you know, pipes. So we can use the, uh, uh, you know, Moody's diagram uh, to find the best initial guess. So for pipe one, the relative roughness is almost, you know, 0 0.001, almost here. So probably, you know, 0 0.02, is the best value, initial value of 0, 0.0, for example, 90. I prefer to say 0 0.02. And then for the second one, the epsilon over D is something around 0.15. So something around, you know, point, let's say 0 0.24 is probably the best value for initial, you know, guess of friction factor for pipe two. Now we have the F1 and F2, we can find, you know, the uh, velocities by using these two, you know, values. Uh, so these are the values for uh, velocity for pipe 1 and pipe 2 by using these two correlations. You have the velocities. You can use these co two correlations to find the volumetric flow rate in both these two pipes. Now let's check, you know, the total volumetric flow rate. So the total volumetric flow rate is 1.4, almost uh, 1.46 cubic feet per second, which is higher than, you know, this actually, you know, uh, target value. So what we need to do, we need to just repeat this process. How? By using the new value for friction factor. So you have the velocities, you can calculate the Reynolds number, and then you can find the new friction factor. So uh, I just repeated with the new, you know, friction factors. So this is the new velocities based on, you know, this new friction factor by using these two correlations. Now you can find the volumetric flow rates. And now let's check the total volumetric flow rates. And then now the total volumetric flow rate is one point, and you know, almost 25. So this is good. Let's go to the next part. You need to check the delta P. You need to make sure that the delta P is, you know, 1150 pound per, you know, uh, feet a square. So uh, you have actually we develop, you know, correlation for delta P1 and delta P2. These are, you know, correlation for delta P. Now you have the friction factor, these values. You have the velocities, these values. If you substitute here, you can find the delta P uh, by using, you know, equation for um, from pipe one and also pipe two. And then you can see that, you know, these two actually values are pretty close and equals to the 1150 uh, pound per feet square. So this is acceptable. So we can actually accept this, you know, uh, friction factors, these velocities, and these volumetric flow rates, and then we can report uh, this uh, volumetric flow uh, rate. Sorry, this is not correct, guys. You know, this is just a comparison from the previous slide. So the exact value are these, you know, values, but not, you know, uh, these values, correct? Um, no, sorry, this is here. Yeah, this is this is the correct one, guys. My bad. You know, this is the uh, actually, you know, um, uh, this is the correlations, and then this is the values that we calculate, you know, from these correlations. Okay, so uh, this is the first method, you know, to solve, you know, to find the volumetric flow rates. For the second method, 
it's actually pretty close to this close uh, to this method however in this one when you found the volumetric flow uh, sorry when you found the velocities by using these two equations that you found from the Bernoulli equation for 5.1 and 5.2 uh, when you found the velocities you calculate the Reynolds number you calculate the friction factors and then you check these friction factors you know with the initial guess and then if this difference is less than 0 0.003 you're good and then you need to check the volumetric flow rate. And so if the volumetric flow rate is actually 1.25, the total volumetric flow rate, just report the volumetric flow rate. Otherwise, normalize the V.1 and V.2. How here you can see, you know, the how this method works. So, uh, look, guys, based on, you know, this calculation and then based on the uh, friction factor that, you know, satisfy this, you know, uh, condition, we found the volumetric flow rate and volumetric flow rate too. So these two volumetric flow rates based on, you know, this actually, you know, um, uh, you know, um, criteria. Now, uh, so we need to check, you know, the total volumetric flow rate. If you add this total Q1 and Q2, you can see that the total is 1.417, which is higher than, you know, uh, actually target value, which is 1.25. So what we need to do, we need to normalize, you know, this value. How? We can just normalize it based on you know, this, you know, equation. So if you normalize it based on the 1.25, the Q new will be, you know, 0 0.9 uh, for the uh, first pipe will be 0 0.926 and for the second pipe will be 0 0.324 cubic feet per second. And now uh, you can find, you know, the delta P1 and delta P2 to see, you know, if the delta P is actually equals to 1150 uh, PSF. So these are almost, you know, equals to the 1150. So you can accept, you know, these values and then you can report the volumetric flow rate. So here you can see the summary, you know, by using these two methods. For method one, so these are the delta P, they are pretty close to the, you know, 1150 PSF uh, pound per feet um, per square. And then these are the volumetric flow rates. And then this is the second method by uh, you know values by using the second method they are pretty close you know by using both these two methods so this is you know the uh all you need to know about the uh parallel pipes sometimes you may have uh, you know loops so in this case if you have loops what you need to do you need to write you know the uh, actually uh, Bernoulli equation, you need to write the mass conservation equation, and then you can find a relationship you know, between the help losses and volumetric flow rate. For example, for this, you know, example, for this specific example, so, uh, you know, the total volumetric flow rate or the volumetric flow rate here, if we assume that this is an incompressible flow rate, equals to the V2, uh, volumetric flow rate in pipe 2 plus volumetric flow rate in pipe 3. What's about the delta P? Uh, for the delta P relationship between delta P or uh, head losses in pipe two and pipe three, if you write the Bernoulli equation for, uh, you know, between let's say this point and, you know, point B and all, uh, you know, by using the pipe two and also between this point and point B by using, you know, pipe three, we can prove that, you know, the head loss for actually pipe two equals to the head loss pipe Three. Now you can use actually these two equations to solve this loop. If you have more complex, you know, uh, cases, again, what you need to do, you need to just uh, set Bernoulli energy equation and mass conservation equation. You can find, you know, relationship between the head losses. Uh, if you just write the Bernoulli equation and then you can solve the problems. So here you can see an example. So we have three actually tanks. And then there is no pumps, you know, between these three tanks. And so these three tanks are, you know, connected by, uh, uh, you know, three pipes. We have the length and diameter for each pipe. We have the elevation for tanks. And then we know that the friction factor is the same and equals to 0 0.03. You are asked to find, you know, the uh, water velocity in each pipe, correct? So to find it, you know, uh, water velocity in each pipe, what we can do, we can, uh, the first thing is that, you know, based on the elevation, we can assume that water flows from tank A to C and also from tank B to tank C, correct? 
And then if you assume that, you know, water flows from tank A uh, and B into C based on, you know, the elevation. So we can find a relationship between velocity in pi uh, pipe one, uh, pipe two and pipe three. How we know that based on this assumption, the V dot one plus V dot two equals to the V dot in pipe three, correct? Or volumetric flow rate in pipe one plus volumetric flow rate in pipe two equals the volumetric flow rate, pipe, uh, uh, volumetric flow rate in pipe three. You have the diameters, so you can find the areas. If you substitute for the areas in two in a correlation, we can find a relationship between volumetric flow, uh, between velocities, V1, V2, and V3. Now, we can set a, you know, a Bernoulli equation, for example, between tank A and tank C. If you set the Bernoulli equation between tank A and C, correct, if you write, you know, if you saw, you know, the uh, actually um, uh, water level, you know, the, uh, you know surface, you know, as in, you know, uh, point A here as, as point C, then we can cancel the pressure because the pressure is, you know, the atmospheric pressure. Then uh, you can also assume that the velocity in the tank is almost zero. We can cancel the velocities. And then there is no pump, there is no turbine. So you can cancel these things and then you can write that the HL equals to the delta Z. So HL between uh, tank A and C equals to the HL in pipe one plus HL in pipe three. This equation, guys, look. HL in pipe one, HL in pipe three. So we have the ZA, we have the ZC, so F1 and F3 are noun, uh, L1 is noun, D1 is noun, so we can find a, actually equation between V1 and V3, correct? Now, if you set the Bernoulli equation between uh, uh, tank B and tank C, you can find equation between V2 and V3. Now you have three equations. If you solve these three equations simultaneously, you can find the velocities. And so the last problem, guys, the last example uh, in this lecture is for um, actually this um, process. There is a tank and then, uh, you know, we actually have a, you know, system to just circulate this water. Actually, this is, uh, you know, uh, let's say, you know, uh, water treatment system. For example, this can be a pool and then there is a, you know, pump, uh, you know, filter to just uh, filter this water and then uh, just see, uh, 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 just, uh, just return this water, you know, to the tank. So we have information for the minor losses. So you should consider the minor losses and then you are asked to just find the, uh, we have the, you know, uh, power for this pump and then you are asked to find the uh, flow rate through filter or volumetric flow rate. So the volumetric flow rate is the same. Now, if you just look at the available information, guys, so we have the diameter for the pipe is known. However, both velocities and volumetric flow rate are unknown. So this is the type two. And then let's just set, you know, um, some equations, you know, uh, based on the Reynolds, based on the Bernoulli equation and uh, mass conservation equation. If you set the Bernoulli equation between point one and two uh, for the, you know, actually water surface in the tank. So uh, we can cancel the pressures because both pressure are atmospheric pressure. We can cancel Z elevations. We can cancel the velocities, correct? There is no turbine. And then we can write HL equals to the H a. What is the HA? HA is actually um, head added to the system. Keep in your mind that here HA is, you know, has the unit of meter. However, you have the power, you know, pro, uh, uh, the power of this pump. So what you need to do, you need to convert this power to head. So from this equation, uh, and then you know that the total head loss is, you know, a combination of the uh, major losses and minor losses. If we just combine these two correlations, uh, we can write, you know, we can find equation for the HA. And then from fluid mechanics, you need to know if you want to convert meter uh, to power or power to meter, we can use this correlation. So uh, uh, actually, uh, head equals to the power over density times G times volumetric flow rate. So uh, 
power is known, you have the density, you have the G, and then you can just write, you can set, a, a, you know, you can write volumetric flow rate equals to the area times velocity, and then area is known because you have the diameter. So from here, if you simplify, if you substitute, you know, the available information, you can find this relationship for HA. If you substitute here, then this will be, you know, equation one, correct? We can actually simplify, you know, equation one. How we can just add, you know, values for the KL. KL is known, and then we can find a relationship. L is also known. Diameter is known. Then we can find a relationship between friction factor and velocity. So if you substitute the available information into equation one, you can find a relationship between velocity and friction factor. So this is equation two, and then. You can write the Reynolds number equals the rho VD over mu. So uh, everything is known except the uh, velocity. So we can find a relationship between Reynolds and velocity. Now, how we can solve this problem? You, know, you actually learned in the previous lectures. What you need to do first, you need to assume a value for the friction factor. You need to find the uh, velocity from equation two. Correct. Now you have the velocity. You can find the Reynolds number from equation three. You have the Reynolds number. You have the relative roughness. You can find the new F. And then you can compare this new F with initial values. So uh, what is the best initial guess for F friction factor? We have the epsilon over this almost as 0 0.01. And then based on the Bernoulli equation, probably the best assumption for the, you know, um, a friction factor is 0 0.04 or 0 0.039. So I started with 0 0.04, and then I calculate, you know, the uh, friction factor. Uh, sorry, I calculate the velocities and then Reynolds number, and then this is the new friction factor based on the Reynolds number and relative roughness. So this is actually, you know, uh, uh, pretty close to the you know, initial guess. So you can accept this. Uh, velocity and then you can report the velocity and volumetric flow rate so next lecture i will go over you know the uh, pi networks thank you so much and have a great day